Back on the Factory 78. It's been maybe 10 years, I think. And we're back here. I need to come drop a freestyle soon. Peace. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> This is very yeah. nice. You know? I see it everywhere. See yeah. yeah man. Well, we're here in London. Yeah. This meeting also with Casper Nuvis. Yeah. All the way from South Africa. Mm. As a hip hop artist, when did you start taking inspiration from our piano? Because you're on my piano heavy. Right? Yeah, with I'm a piano, we one of the first rappers, you know, to embrace it. So um if you look into like early I'm a piano hits, one of them was Manadim Polai, you know. Yeah. Um and I was introduced to it by a late friend of mine. His name is DJ Somebody. Yeah. And he he yeah, he he kinda gave me the the look and and I was already you know going to his club and partying and stuff. So he he um um kinda was the guy to to push us in that direction and then it took over the world but i just love the sound i've always loved dance music before i loved quieto so i've always just loved it yeah so i was there is there any sound you should be expecting from south africa apart from is there any other right now there's three step three step yeah three step it's like sounds like piano but it's not it's it's like um if i don't know if you know that song by Tugzin called deep line yeah yeah i'll, I'll let me play it for you actually It'll be dope. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know if you ever did this song. You don't know it. Yeah. Does it have a lot of vocal in it? Yeah, there's a vocal on it. But I can't find the vocal. Then after here, something Yeah. But anyway, yeah, this is the vocal. So this is the sound yeah. now in SA. Oh, yes, DJ talks in. Yeah, you talk about DJ somebody when we heard that. Yeah. Something happened. Yeah. How's your mental health? How's You know what, man? My mental you know, health. Ricky, at the same time, sorry, but. Yeah, Ricky, somebody, AKA. Okay. My mental health wasn't in, the, in a good place. I won't lie, but I never noticed. I went through a dip, you know, just. I think the whole country just was traumatized. You know, we experienced so much death in a short period of time. And, you know, it was, you know, like also just reminding us all that, you know, our time is coming as well, you know. So Nobody knows we hope that it's not soon, but, you know, we, we kind of have to, you know, it makes you appreciate life too, you know. It's like, I, you know, life is, is, is borrowed time and, it got me closer to God as well, you know, to, you know, that's how I found God. And I'm in such a good place right now, you know, and I thank God, you know, for 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 having an encounter with me and, and helping me, to, you know, build again and repurposing my life in general. And life is more purposeful now. So it wasn't in a good place, but, you know, now I am in a good place. You know, started with therapy, okay. um, gave my life to God, you know, um, Cut down substances, you know. Uh, mm. I don't drink now. I don't have a problem with alcohol, but I haven't drank in like four months. Wow. Nice. Um, so yeah, things are going very well, you know. Um, my addictions. I was addicted to sex. You said, I crazy. Podcast, was... Yeah, you know, and it's so crazy. Like <laughs> that podcast, kind of like I saw now people trying to like. Um, demonize what I was trying to do. You know what I mean? And it's like, I was like actually trying to help guys to say, yo, man, this thing is is hectic. And then I saw a blog saying, yo, Casper comes out and admits he's a sex addict. I'm like, what? I never said I was a sex addict. I just, I was addicted to sex. And then, and most of us are, but we're not even, you know, aware. But most men won't admit, you know, you, you go around the world and you see men saying things like all men cheat or whatever. It's just... Admitting that you're actually addicted to something that you're not supposed to be doing. It's actually meant to be in marriage with one woman. That's how God intended it to so be. Yeah, one man, one woman now. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I'm a one man woman okay. now. Well, let's just go back to the music, man. It's not about music. <laughs> it's too heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a piano sound that has influenced yeah. you big music in many ways. How much has influenced your music as a rapper? I love dance music. So my piano didn't influence me. 
it's 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 you know it's something that wasn't far fetched. It's something that you know is right down my alley, right down my lane. You know, my 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 role models, guys like WHP, were already doing dance music. May his soul rest in peace. And he could rap on any beat. So my piano didn't really change anything for me as an artist, but it changed the landscape of South African music. Yeah. Well, you're still talking about my piano because the biggest genre. So do you consider my piano a subgenre of Afrobeat or genre of, of Afrobeat? My piano can't be a, a subgenre of Afrobeat. People say that that's why. No, Niger Nigerians say that. It's it's such a you know, I love Nigerians because they're so confident and they just take over. They go anywhere and they just take over. And it's crazy that they really trying to take my piano as and own it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like it but it just shows how confident and um powerful they Music are. Right? But I'm a piano is a South African genre. It's not a subgenre of Af Afrobeat. Nothing will be a subgenre of Afrobeat. Like Afrobeat is Afrobeat and we appreciate it and we love it and it's done great. Mm -hmm. If anything, I feel like everybody should be appreciating South Africa for creating a sound Good that sound. everybody can, you know, work and live from and, 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 and enjoy working with. Because when people make Afrobeat in any, un any country, it's called Afrobeat. And 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 people say it comes from West Africa, Nigeria. Yeah. It's like that. It doesn't matter who makes it anyway. But when people make I'm a piano now in Nigeria, now they want to make it a subgenre, and it's it's not right. So I always look at it and laugh, you know. And there's banter between the two countries. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are like, "Yo, Af my piano comes from South Africa, but we took it to the world." <laughs> it's like, how did how did you know of it if it didn't come from South Africa? When it goes to Nigeria, it's also going into the world. It comes from. They're playing the hard. I, that's what I think. I think it should just be embraced as African music. music. It's from South Africa, but it is true that the Nigerian market or the Afrobeat market put it heavily in the forefront of everybody's faces because they just love dance music. So everybody works together, you know, without without the support of Afrobeat, without support of Nigerians, without support of other African countries, my piano wouldn't be where it is. So same with Afrobeat, you know, if we're not playing it in our countries, it's it's all, it's actually a, a, a oneness thing, you know, Africa and our, so, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I want to touch on um, uh, Trevor Noah. Yeah. Who said Grammy 2024? Yeah. And Tyler won over David Bonabash. Yeah. Like, Trevor Noah is a great, great guy. Yeah. And I believe that South Africa, you know, they're not like embracing me enough. Like I don't know what, what it is with, with South African culture to celebrate, you know, that's what I'm saying. I admire that about Nigeria and Ghana and um, Ivory Coast. And, uh, you know, you know, you, you have guys like Fali Pupa, who's so big in his country and embraced. We we might know the mainstream guys, like the Burner Boys and whatever, but you look at other countries and you have guys like Diamond Platinums in Tanzania, he's a yeah. megastar. So, and then we have, Trevor Noah in the music, in the entertainment yeah, industry who's yeah. doing so well, but South Africans I mean, don't America. really, well, and he's, yeah, he's one of the biggest comedians in the world and he's from South Africa. He should be embraced more. So I remember there was a time that they did a, a, a campaign with him and tourism and the country was complaining about how much he got paid. And I'm like, he deserves, it, it, it deserves the money. And it, you know, when you, when he gets paid that kind of money wherever he goes in the world. So, I don't know what it is about South Africans that we kind of have like a self-hate problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and even when we talk about it, like I'm saying right now, I say South African have a self-hate problem. They'll take that clip and then play it everywhere. Casper University, South Africans hate themselves. And then it turns into something else. Instead of just listening to that we have a problem at home, we kind of need to fix it and embrace, yeah, you know, it's, ourselves it's, too much, a bit more. It's an entertainer, but from everybody in Africa, I mean, it's... It was number of the, the program he did in America. The Daily program. Show. Yeah, Daily Show. Come on, and a Grammy, and a, it's like nobody act like nothing happened. Yeah, it's like you know. It, yeah, it's funny. It's it's, mm. and and it's also have we have this thing of wanting to appreciate someone once they they there, like Black Coffee. Oh, he's a Black big. Black Coffee's a journal on his own for me. Yeah, it's so like a journal of artists on his own. So it's like, yeah, Black Coffee's the guy, but then they feel like they can still disrespect him. And it's, it's funny. I don't know, man. I don't have the answer to that. It also baffles me how we're, how we're treated at home, you know? Mm -hmm. Because if anything, 
we are the beacons of hope and light and we're trying to inspire the next generation to say you can take it further and further just like we were inspired by the WHPs, the Brenda Fassies, the you know the is huge is huge yeah yeah wow nice so so how much have you used your position to influence people and society i tried my bit man i'm not a i'm not a i'm not a politician um you stand for the people yeah i'm 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 just a regular guy with a platform man i share as much as i can but you know we 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 our voices are too big and we live in a country where you can get hurt for saying certain things, you know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, people put the pressure on celebrities and they forget that we don't even have the power really. Like, you know what I mean? We can't even protect ourselves. You can't You can't go out there and talk about the president because we don't have the type of things that would, you know, protect us. So we are trying to, you know, put bread on our tables, but... We're just hoping for a better day, man. We're hoping for a better day. Leaders that are God fearing and who who would push the country to be what it's supposed to be. I think our country has the biggest potential, 100%. but I just think it's mismanaged. You know, Kaspar, you're a you're a boss. There was a time you signed Nadia. And yeah, Kai, yeah. And then um, as a record label boss, what are the things you look for before considering signing an artist? I haven't seen artists in a while, but uh, I think artists need to be self-sufficient. That's, you know, the artist that any label will sign. If you can, if you do everything yourself, you come as a package, it's an easy sign. But, you know, when you still have to be developed and all of that, it's just too much stress. So would you assist or sign an artist that already look at wealthy, wearing expensive clothes? And watches, you know. Yeah, I would so, definitely sign an artist who's who so looks the part. Like you already made already. Oh, okay. Nah, I don't. I don't. I, I mean, I don't mind working an artist, but it's just like right now, labels look for people who have a full yeah. package. You know, for me, if it's solely based on the music, you have to be that amazing. You know. So what should we be looking for? I mean, looking for from Casper, I think. Kespa, uh, a lot of new music, a lot of positive stuff, a lot of positive music, a lot of um, a lot of um, spiritual uh, enlightenment as far as, you know, I just gave my life to God. You know, I believe in Jesus Christ everywhere I go. I have to say that because, you know, um, that's my Lord and Savior. And I just feel like, Life is so spiritual and life is about God and that's what people will be getting from me mostly. And uh more stuff, more you know, fashion, um music, yeah, all of yes, that. So yeah. Yeah, Billiard is also growing. Um yeah, everything, man. I think now of any of of, of, of all the times I'm more energized to just do more, more, more and uh spread my talents. So how's hip-hop looking in South Africa at the moment? Uh, hip-hop is always healthy, man. It's just, you know, people have their attention on, I'm a piano, really, but it's always healthy. There's new kids who are doing their thing, and I really love hip-hop music. So we should be looking out for any major young guys coming up? Uh, new guys in the hip-hop space. There's these kids from South Africa called the Quailers. Um, You know, Black is not new, but he's doing his thing. Um... Who else would I would consider new? There's a kid called Roy, who's like more on the drill side. Um, Tato Soul. Yeah, there's a lot of kids. Madlera Dope Boy. There's a lot of new guys who are just doing dope stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Kaspar, man. Thank you.